morning, everyone, and good Shabbos. This Shabbos has a special name. It's called Shabbat Chazon. Why is it called Shabbat Chazon? Because the Torah this week, the opening words are Chazon Yeshayah, the vision of Isaiah. And he talks about the, the conduct and the behavior of the Jews before the destruction of the Temple. And he forewarns what will occur uh, when the Jews don't change their ways. And what's fascinating is that on Saturday night, the, we sit down and read the Book of Lamentations from mm-hmm. Jeremiah. And in the morning, we're going to read the Torah, the words of Moshe. And there's a word that we find in tomorrow's Parsha, that we find in the Haftorah, that we find in the Book of Lamentations, the word Echa. Moshe Beinu cries out in tomorrow's Torah reading, which is always the Shabbat before Tisha Echa Esalavadi. Uh, How can I carry all alone the quarrels, the rifts, the, the infighting amongst the Jewish people. Then Isaiah looks at the state of affairs in Jerusalem and he says, How did the faithful city of justice become a city like a harlot full of corruption? And then in the evening, a few hours later, we're going to sit on the floor and read the books of Echa of Lamentations where Jeremiah says, How did this beautiful city of Jerusalem become like a widower sitting all alone in, in, in loneliness and isolation. So, there's a famous uh, parable given by the famous Hasidic master of Levi Yitzchak of Adichev, who uh, lived at the end of the 1700s. And he says, why is it called the vision of Isaiah? He takes it and says something very inspiring. And he says there was once a mother uh, and a father who bought a beautiful suit for their child. And uh, the child played in the mud and got it dirty and ripped the suit. So the mother and the father brought the kid a second suit. And once again, he said, Be, take care of your suit. But he ran around, he got, got it dirty, ripped it. So now the parents went and made a third suit for the child. But they said, you see this suit, we're not giving it to you. We're going to hang it in the closet. And when you demonstrate to us that you're mature enough to take care of your clothing, we'll give you the third suit. So every year they would show this kid the suit and say, you see, when you're ready, you're going to get this suit. So he says, what is the vision of Isaiah? That this Shabbat, says the great Hasidic master of Levi Tzvaditsha, who is known for his love of the Jewish people, that God shows every Jew, the soul of every Jew, a vision of the third temple. He says, you see, the first temple was destroyed because of your behavior. The second one, because of your behavior. Your fighting, your animosity, your hatred amongst yourselves. There was a lack of love and unity. Here is the vision of the third temple, what it's going to look like. When you're ready and you demonstrate you've changed your ways, you will merit the third rebuilding of the third temple. That's the way he understands the story of the vision of Isaiah. Now it's fascinating, I just heard a story that's associated with Levi Yitzhak of Arditsha, because you know, the Lubavitcher Rebbe always used to say, why is the Mashiach not here already? It's been 1900 plus years, we've changed our ways, we've done so many good things, the Jewish people are a beloved nation, why is God withholding from us the coming of Mashiach and the rebuilding of the temple? So I'll tell you a story that just happened a few months ago, also associated with Eitz of Badejo, a true story. 2019, not 1800, but 2019. This is the story. It's a religious Jew who sells things on Amazon. Electronics, different things. One day he got a batch of iPods at a good price. So that night, before he went to sleep, he put up on Amazon, he had a couple of dozen iPads, like, you know, 30, 40 iPads. And he put it up, $400 an iPad. He goes to sleep, he wakes up in the morning, he goes to shul, he goes into office, he goes into his um, Amazon account. And by the way, his username was L.Y. Bardichev. He liked Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Bardichev. He, liked, uh, he, so, he had an affinity to this rabbi. So that was the username he used, L.Y. Bardichev, Levi Yitzhak Bardichev. So he says, he goes in in the morning, he turns on his guy, he sees... All 40 iPads sold out over the night. This never happened to him. 40 iPads in one night. What's going on? So on the one hand, he's excited. But then he starts looking closer and he sees he made a mistake. He left out a zero. He listed the iPads for $40 an iPad. So they were all sold. And he goes, oh my gosh, what a loss. I lost thousands of dollars. And according to the laws of Amazon, you're not allowed to cancel a purchase because it ruins your metrics and your credibility and this and that. So that's it. He has to fulfill the orders for $40. And he's devastated. He lost a lot of money. He starts going through his emails and he sees an email. Hi, my name is Yehuda from Lakewood. He opens up the email and he says, Hi, my name is Yehuda from Lakewood. I also sell electronics. I always check my competitors' prices on Amazon because I sell on Amazon. 
I saw you listed these iPads for forty dollars. I knew right away it was a mistake. There's no way you could be selling iPads for forty dollars and turning a profit. I realized you left out a zero, so I bought all the iPads. He says, "Call me. Let me know what you want to do. I could either cancel it because the buyer could cancel it, but you have to take it down right away, or I could." Close out the order, buy it, and ship it back to you, and you'll give me back the money I laid out. And that's the Jewish people. That's that's called the opposite of what Moshe says. When Jews look out for each other and get, and here it's his, his competitor, but he wants him to do well as well. And that's what we see today in the Jewish people. We see tremendous outpouring of love and goodness and kindness. And therefore, it's time to send Mashiach to rebuild the temple to restore Jerusalem. You know, there was a. In these nine days, we had two terrible tragedies. Three. Two in America, two mass shootings, last, the beginning of the nine days. And just the other day, yesterday, we had a 9 year old boy in Israel. His name was Devir Sorek, who was stabbed horrifically to death. He was going to buy in Jerusalem a present for his teachers. And he, di- he died holding on to the gifts that he had bought for his teachers. He was a boy of tremendous kindness. But I just discovered yesterday that, you know, every year for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we bring a wonderful chazan and choir from Israel. Devir is the younger brother of one of our choir members. If you remember Shachar, one of our choir members, he used to play the flute, he played at the concert that you always host. It was his younger brother. And it's, I was just in Israel a few weeks ago, and I was walking in Yerushalayim, and I ran into Shachar, and we hugged, and we embraced, and I hadn't seen him for over a year. And it was his younger brother, and it hit so close to home, Every tragedy puts close to home, but especially knowing his brother and the family. And his father stood up at the funeral, uh, 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 the father of Shachan, the father of this beautiful boy, Devere, and he said, my son had the light of holiness, of goodness, of love, of kindness in his eye. This murderer had blood in his eyes. And he said, God gave us a gift of having this beautiful child for 19 years. And he said, we as Jews will always choose life, and Bachar Tavachayim will continuously choose life. And so when we come to the Shabbat of Tisha B'av, we say to Hashem, Hashem, it's been enough. We've suffered a lot enough. The world has gone mad. So much hatred, so much violence, so much senseless killing. And it's time to send Mashiach to redeem the world from its troubles, from its misery, from its pain, from its suffering. We've suffered thousands of years in exile. There's so much goodness. Wherever you look, so many organizations helping people, doing things for people. Look down on your children. Who is like your nation, Israel? And may this be, give us that suit that you made for us. Give us that holy temple, or lazy, it's what it should said. And let us come to a state of fulfillment in this world where, as the prophecies say, there'll be no more violence, there'll be no more bloodshed, but each man will learn to know Hashem and to love each other.